everyone, Alex Dunn here, and today I am going to be sharing three game-changing pieces of writing advice that changed the way I write, that helped me level up. I set myself the thought experiment because I've been doing a lot of reflection on my writing. As I am now three published books deep, and I've just finished my sixth book and sent it to my editor, which means I still have to edit it, but there will be a seventh book I will write soon, and I know I've leveled up a lot. I posted some videos on this recently about like my writer's journey and being comparative, and this was another thing. I was like, what were the three big pieces of, of advice that I would give to other writers who are also looking for potentially game-changing things, especially if you feel like you're kind of mid-level and you can definitely get to the next step in terms of craft. Now, regular viewers are not going to be shocked by any of these. These are things that I have covered over the course of the journey on this channel, but I know a ton of people are newer to the channel, newer to me, or heck, don't want to go digging through an archive to watch individual, very long videos about things. So this is me boiling down those three things in one digestible video with the timestamps as always, because I've already rambled on really long in this introduction. So here we go. The first game-changing piece of writing advice was really kind of editing advice, but you can apply it to your writing once you learn it, and I got this from my literary agent, Alana Roth Parker, and I call this the magic pacing fix. And it's the kind of thing that it's like she had to articulate it to me for a light bulb to go off. You will notice a theme with this that's also the case in one of the other things. The things that you subconsciously as a writer, as a reader, kind of know, but someone almost has to say it to you so that you start really paying attention to it. And that is when you can level up. The magic pacing fix is, so as an editing tip, when you have something that is a little bit too long and you need to do edit for pacing, but there's nothing that you feel you can really cut in terms of story or beats, character, etc. You need to go line by line, you need to look at the words on the page, look at the prose, and look at how it literally reads. How long are your paragraphs? Where are the instances where you are using three long, meandering, detailed sentences where really, if you were harsher with yourself, you could drill that down to two or even one really beautiful and succinct sentence to say the same thing? Where are the places that you are going on and on and on about the same idea or repeating ideas across, say, a scene or several chapters or act? You're looking for those places to tighten. You're thinking about how readers who are not you are literally going to read the prose on the page. You are looking for places where they might get tripped up. This can be either places where it's too choppy, where they're stopping constantly off of line breaks, off of awkward punctuation, she says as the person who abuses the nice M dash or the parentheses, essentially punctuation is always a clue to a reader to stop and pay attention and you can be stopping them too much. You can be overusing commas. The opposite, you can be under using commas or other punctuation. Your sentences can be too long. You can be using a lot of run-ons, which sometimes can be a stylistic choice and sometimes is not great. Your paragraphs can go on and on and on and on. And the brain, the mind needs some natural stopping places. So you're going to be harsh with yourself and looking at your writing. And this is a great editing and pacing tip, but where it has leveled up my writing overall is that when you start Start to pay attention to this and you do your first kind of harsh edit on yourself in terms of the literal rhythm of the words and the sentences and the paragraphs on the page and what's saying too much and what's saying too little, this turns into a drafting tool because as you're writing going forward you can go, oh this feels like a natural breaking, not a breaking point, but like a stop point for this idea new paragraph. I'm, I'm creating some rhythm and movement on the page that's going to help a reader go through it, not trip them up or frustrate them. And it's just, it's leveled up my writing. It's definitely leveled up my editing skills, but it's also helped with drafting. And part of improving this, like, look at books that you like, look at how you read through a page and start to internalize, ah, I see where these natural stopping points are. Ah, I see where they very succinctly described something, and that's when you start to challenge yourself to do the same thing in your writing. So the second 
piece of writing advice that just like leveled me up is another one of like someone had to say it and articulate it on Twitter in this case for a light bulb to go off over my head and it has become one of my favorite pieces of writing advice overall but especially leveling up writing advice. I think any and all writers can definitely kind of work on this. And I call it, it's a cousin to show, don't tell. That goes in quotes because you might all know, and if you don't, hi, I don't like the advice, show, don't tell, because the don't is a little bit too absolute for me. Telling has its place in fiction. And so what I like about narrate, narration, versus dramatize or dramatization, Again, regular viewers are like, aha, I know this one. What I like about articulating it in that way and looking at it in that way is that it is not an either or neither nor kind of situation. You need both types of writing and storytelling technique in a good book. Narration is when, yeah, you're, it's like the storytelling. You are saying something in a more straightforward way. You are skipping over something instead of dramatizing it. Dramatizing being you're going to write a full scene where characters are in a place and moving through a scene and maybe talking to each other. That's dramatizing a moment. And the key here is to recognize when to do either or. You need narration because if you had an entire book that was all dramatization, it'd be too long. So if you're an overrater, look to see where you're dramatizing, where maybe you could be narrating instead. Because sometimes all you need is one sentence. It's essentially a transition line to get the characters from one point to the other or explain something to the reader that has happened or is happening so that you can pick and choose those juicy dramatization moments. Now the writer who tweeted about this and set off the light bulb moment was Lainey Taylor. And her example was she had a scene with a kiss in it and she had a line of narration about the characters kissing and someone said to her this is a big emotional culmination moment you're really robbing the readers of having a moment here you should dramatize this and she rewrote it to actually dramatize that thing that had been one line and it fixed the scene and made it better. So that's kind of, that's one example, but those are the kind of things that you can think of. And this has definitely helped me because A, it made me feel a lot better <laughs> about show versus tell. I tend toward telling a lot and, and they're not interchangeable with each other. You can tell in a scene of dramatization and you can show in a line of narration. They are different things. But again, it's how I like to think about the balance. But it's definitely made me think about kind of what are those moments that would benefit from dramatization? Where is it really worth digging into write full-fledged scenes? And where can I let myself off the hook and honestly put a little less pressure on myself and just have some efficient lines of narration? I think this is just a really good story craft thing that can help a lot of writers. And it definitely helped me once I started conceptualizing the idea as narrate versus dramatize. And so the third and final game changing piece of writing advice, this came through working with multiple editors and going through the process on multiple books with traditional publishers. And it's annoying at first, but it has made a huge difference in my writing, which is, it's a combination of echoes slash word repetition crutch words, which can be the same, but also kind of ties together often with adverb abuse, as well as filtering, slash straight up word choice, because it figures into everything else. And it is this anal retentive thing that you'll find at a lot of publishers, not all of them, but I actually think it's a gift when you get an editor who's really into this kind of thing, your regular editor, your dev editor, or copy editor. At Random House specifically, this is a thing that my team is really into and it forced me to level up on in a lot of places, but I also had this at HMH. And it's being brutal with yourself about your word choice not going easy on yourself when it's like, oh, well, I'll just use that word or I'll use that same phrase over and over and over again. It's challenging yourself to think about your crutches. What are the words and phrases you go to over and over again that are okay to go to when you're drafting, but you have to fix it later because readers do notice and do get annoyed whether directly or subconsciously, and this can lead to a lack of enjoyment or less enjoyment of your work, the same words and phrases being used over and over again. But especially when 
you can change those words and phrases to be more specific or more evocative or just, you know, annoy them less with repetition. For me especially, this has really helped kick me in the butt in terms of, you know, that like telling thing. Well, when you're using the same kind of go-to shortcut phrase to describe how someone is feeling or reacting to something and someone calls you on it and is like, you do this 20 times in the manuscript, you have to go through each of those instances and find better ways to express similar ideas. It's just gonna make you a stronger, better writer provided you do it. My advice to writers if you're going through this in your editorial process with other people is your first instinct is defensiveness and then you have to actually push through that. Don't just stet all of those requests for changes. Now we do get to fight for some. I believe I I have a couple of crutch words that I just really really love. One of them is the word niggle and I believe I got to keep three in the ivies maybe two, but originally there were more like eight, and so you have to give on some so that you know which ones that you want to keep, because sometimes your crutch words are actually quite specific. Uh, specificity is good. But where this is just game changing to me is that it has forced me to be a lot more thoughtful about my line level prose, how I am expressing things, lazy writing essentially. And again, it's okay to have a bit of lazy writing in a draft because sometimes otherwise we will not get through the draft. But part of being a writer who is leveling up, who is doing their best work, especially on the editing end, is to be brutal with yourself and not be precious about, oh, well I wrote it so it's good. And not feeling defensive that, like, look, no one's saying you're a bad writer because you overuse a phrase or a, a word, because you're not a bad writer if you then, you know, do the work to change it and improve it. So those are the three pieces of game-changing writing advice that have made a substantive difference in my writing, and you can kind of see a theme in them. It's about function in the story, being really harsh with myself, brutal with myself about function, about word of choice, meaning, and isn't this just the heart and soul of writing? It is the choices you make in the, the individual lines, but also on a more macro level in terms of story, what you are choosing to put on the page, how it is on the page, and what that communicates to a reader, how it impacts their reading experience, what it makes them feel. And so I hope this was helpful because I know, you know, there's a ton of 101 writing advice out there. I do it myself and that is very helpful as well. Actually, no matter what level you're at, there's always going to be something that you have as an Achilles heel, she says, still doing way too much filtering her writing, which I try to fix in editing. Uh, but I hope this is helpful if you're like, yeah, but how do I improve? But I hope this is helpful if you are just feeling stuck, whether it's getting an agent, whether it's selling a book, whether it's knowing that you can always improve as a writer. And why wouldn't you want to work on improving that? We love writing. It's an art. It is a craft. It is a muscle that you can exercise and make better. And I personally, I love feeling like every book that I write gets better in some way, whether it's kind of the more nitty gritty prose level stuff, or if it's just, oh, I got better at beats or tension or conflict or what have you. I hope it was helpful wherever you are in your writing journey and what I would love to know down below in the comments, what is the game changing advice that has helped you the most in hindsight? It's different for every person and writer and you never know, you could lead to my next light bulb game changing aha moment or someone else's. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and happy writing.